Hello everybody and welcome back to this Gmod Lure tutorial series. Uh, this is part 11 now and in this video we're going to be taking a look at Derma and how we can use Derma to create uh, virtual windows uh, in a sense in Garage Mod. So, so this is basically what a Derma menu is. If you've ever seen anything that looks like this or anything that looks like this or maybe even things that look like this. You know what I mean? This can all be derma. Now, the thing with derma is a lot of people get confused about is that derma it does not have to be drawn every single frame. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make a window and I'll give you an example. I'm gonna make a local variable. I'm gonna call it frame and I'm gonna set it equal to vgui dot create d frame. Now, the way how this works is we specify that we're creating a vgui element. And the element that we want to create is called dframe. Now, there will be a link in the description to all the different elements you can create, but in this case, we do dframe. Now, I believe you can also do vgui.dframe or something along the lines of that. Uh, I will go ahead and link that in the description, though. So, what this has done is this has created the dframe window and it's now stored a reference to it in this frame variable. So, now what I can do is I can reference it through frame. I could do frame dot maybe set size. And I could set its size to be maybe 1000 by 720. And what I could also do is I could, whoops, I could go ahead and set its uh, position to X and Y coordinates. Um, and then what I can do then is I could do frame.set visible to true. Now this is going to go ahead and make it so that we can actually see the window and frame.make pop up this is going to cause the frame to take control of our mouse in game so if i go back into our game here and i go ahead and do lua underscore open script test dot lua as you can see i now have this window popped up and even though i've tapped in the game this has control of my mouse um, i'll go ahead and drag this around and when i'm done i can go ahead and close it and i'll be back into game so i hope that makes sense if not feel free to ask any questions um as a comment but let's go ahead and see what else we can do so first of all we're going to go ahead and we're going to center this window um and the way how we can center it is we could either do the maths behind it or we can just call the center function on it and that's automatically when it opens going to position it in the center of the screen as you can see so now that we've got it centered let's go ahead and do something interesting um we'll go ahead and make a variable and we'll call it button we'll set it equal to vgui.create uh d button there we go now the important thing here is it's going to ask for a parent so we're gonna we're gonna type in frame and that means we're going to be referencing this this frame variable as the parent for the button what that means is this button is going to be placed on top of the parent and is going to follow it as if it was part of that window so Parenting is very important. Basically, if you have any VGUI element that is part of a window, parent it to the main frame or panel. We'll get over that in a minute. Um, but anyway, so now what we're going to do is we're going to say button.set pause. And I'm going to do um, 10 by 10. Now, a lot of you may get confused and think, well, 10 by 10 is all the way up here in the top left of the screen. I want it to be in the corner well because we set frame as our parent zero zero is the top left of the frame rather than the top left of the screen so 10 10 is you know slightly off so i'm gonna go ahead and show you that um so as long as we create the button set its set its parent and set its position it's automatically going to pop up with the frame so let's go ahead and rerun the script and as you can see here i have a button that i can click it does nothing right now but as i move the window the button will go ahead and follow it because the button is parented to this window so let's go ahead and move its position. Um, so I'm going to move it so 10 across again, but we'll go we'll go 40 down. Now what we can also do is we could do set size, and whoops, we can set its size to be, say, uh, we'll go 200 across by 45 down. Um, and now our button is much bigger. What we can also do is we could say button colon set text, and this is going to go ahead and set the text of our button now now it says hello world so they like there's tons of functions you can use on panels so all of these different these different data types here where we store like a reference to the d frame and the d button these are all basically panels and panels share a lot of the same functions 
Now, again, in the description, I will be linking all of the information you will need in order to understand what you can and can't do with panels, what panels there are. But I want to go ahead and go a bit more in depth here. So I, I, I'll create one more element just to make it um, a bit more clear. So I'll create this one. I'll call it label. And I'll set it equal to VGUI. Oops, didn't mean to do that. VGUI.create and we'll do delabel. Now, again, it's very important to parent it to the frame. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and parent it to frame. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the label and I'm going to set the position of the label to be... Well, the last one was 1045, so we'll do 1090. And then we're going to do label colon set text. And the text is going to be this is a label. Now let's go ahead and uh, run this now. As you can see, it says this is a label here. It says hello world here. And this is our window, everything parents. But what I'm going to do now is when I close it, everything gets destroyed. But I'm going to show you what happens when you don't parent. So let's say we get rid of the parent to the button. So we don't parent the button to the frame. Now when we execute our script, it's still going to open. But as you can see, the button is all the way up there. When I move the window, the button doesn't follow it. And when I close the window, the button is now stuck on my screen. So that's why you got to parent things so that Gary's mod knows what is part of what window and how to, how to handle the behavior for it, if that makes sense. But you know, now that we've got a, a you know a GUI element, what can we what can we do with a button? How do we make it so that something happens when we press it? Well, what we can do is we can create a function. Like let's say we just make a function here called button pressed, and we'll just make it print in our console the button was pressed. Okay, so now that we've created this function, we could create the function to this. So how can we do that? Well, we could simply do button dot do click, spelled exactly like that. Now, please note that it is a dot and not a semicolon um, because we're accessing a property of it. Then we're going to set that equal to and the function name, which is button pressed. Now, remember, don't put the two brackets after it because we're not calling the function. We're referencing the function, so we don't need the brackets. Kind of like a, a variable, we're referencing it as a variable, so then this this holds a reference to this function. So whenever it wants, it can call this function. So now what that's done is it's linked these two together. So whenever do click gets called on the button, it's going to go ahead and call the button pressed function, which is going to go ahead and print it out here. Now, that may seem a bit confusing, but I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll just run it in game and it might make a bit more sense. So, whoops. So let me go ahead and make sure that this is parented back to the frame. I do apologize too. I'm extremely tired right now. Um, but there you go. So now when we click Hello World, as you can see in our console, it says the button was pressed. And each time we click it, that same, the same function executes again and again. So I hope that makes sense. Again, if it doesn't, and, and please don't feel bad to, but just ask me questions. I'll probably answer any single one that uh, I can if you ask me in the comments. So now we can go ahead and we can look at basically the last thing that we're going to do in this video, which is overriding painting on dimmer panels. Now, in case you haven't gathered, this looks incredibly ugly in terms of the dimmer. Um, default dimmer is just ugly. That's how it is. So let's go ahead and see if we can make that look a bit prettier. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another function. Actually, we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll do an anonymous function. It'll be easier. So let's get our uh, our main frame here. And what we're going to do is we're going to do frame dot paint. And I'll explain this in a minute. Function. There we go. Okay, so now for those of you who are confused, basically what this means is paint is the function that gets called when the, the hood is being painted. So what we need to do is we need to override that. So what we do is we access that function dot paint and we set it equal to and then we create our own function here. Now the function automatically passes pre parameters, which is s, which stands for self. That is the frame itself that the paint is being called on w, which is the width of the frame and h being the height of the frame. So what we can do is we could just simply do draw dot rounded box. We can set the roundedness to say, let's set it to five. Then we can set the x and y position to 0, 0, and the width and the height to be the width and the height variables that are up there. And we'll do a, a color of, uh, I don't know, 255, 120, 120. Now, 
the reason why this is not gonna like if I did zero zero it's not gonna draw on the top left of my screen because this is the paint function for the frame so it's gonna start zero zero be the top left of the frame width and height being the very bottom right of the frame so it's it's the exact same as drawn on the screen except we're limited to the balance of the the frame now so if I go ahead and save this I close it in game and I run it again as you can see our default our default frame now is just a rounded box now it still has the close buttons of course um, but let's go ahead and see what else we can do like if we wanted to we could go ahead and draw another box inside um, we can change this color to be I don't know black and then the color inside could be two by two and then minus four if you don't understand the math behind this don't worry um, you can paint whatever you want and then we could do like uh, I don't know 50 50 50 and then we'll have like this kind of gray thing with this black outline around the edge if you get what I mean um, and it's the same with buttons we can override the button if we wanted to so we could say button dot paint equals a function of self whoops self width and the hive and then what we can do and I'm just saying just so you understand in these draw functions the, these paint functions that we create you can use any of the the drawing library as if you was painting onto a hood it will, it will all work so let's go ahead and go into the paint function what we could do here is we could say draw dot rounded box actually just to show you we'll do draw dot outline outlined rect um, and here we'll go ahead and do it zero zero width height and we'll just simply do a color of black actually we'll do white just so it stands out a bit easier on the video so now when I go ahead and run it now I get an error oh draw outline rect is apparently not a thing that is my bad we'll go ahead and just do <laughs> draw around a box um, yeah, so this time we'll set that to zero. We'll set the width and the height to be zero, zero width. Whoops, width and height. And again, the color, whatever color you want. This color I'll do is 255. And then I'll go ahead and go in game. And as you can see, our box is, you probably didn't know as much difference, but it's now a perfectly square white box. Um, and you notice that the box color doesn't change when I go over it. And that's because there's all sorts of functions that you can have right here, like on mouse over, on mouse exit, and stuff like that. So yeah, let's go back to the Gmod wiki real quick. And let's take a look at libraries. Actually, um, let's go ahead and look at panel. So the panels down here, this is kind of like all of the functions that you can call on most panels. Not every, but mostly all panels. And as you can see, there is a lot of them. So you do have a lot of flexibility. Um, and then if you come down here into the panels tab, it's going to go ahead and tell you all of the different types of panels that exist. So, you know, you got like um, D-label, which was one of them that we used, which allows us to do text on, on the panel. Now uh, let's go ahead and look at some more, such as uh, we got D-combo box. I don't know why I can't just go to the D-combo box. So this is the combo box. It allows you to add multiple options and as you can see the thing that's good about the wiki is there's always these little examples you would create it like that and then you can add choices using that and you can have functions for each one of those choices so what happens when or oh, there's one on here on select it'll tell you which number was selected the value of it and the panel that it was selected on so i hope this makes sense you know you can do you can do a lot of um different things like this is color cube which is where a user can make colors so yeah i hope that makes sense to you if you guys have any questions about this go ahead and leave a uh, a comment and i will get back to you as soon as i can um but yeah so uh thanks everybody for watching i hope you learned something and i'll uh, see you in the next video